Tsunami disappeared into the river with a nearly soundless splash. The pale green flecks under her dark blue scales shimmered as she swam upriver. Clay dove in after her, wishing he could see in the dark like she could. At least she'd remembered to activate the glow-in-the-dark stripe along her tail. Mud wings couldn't breathe underwater like sea wings, but they could hold their breath for more than an hour. So whenever the dragonettes wanted to spy on their guardians, Clay and Tsunami could use the river to get closer than the others. He caught up to the sea wing as she wriggled through the underwater gap in the cave wall. It made Clay nervous every time, squeezing through such a small space. He wished he hadn't eaten the extra cow at dinner. His claws scrabbled on the rocks, catching the crevices. There was a brief, terrifying moment as his midsection got stuck. Would he drown down here? Would the prophecy be ruined because of an extra cow? Then, with a whoosh of bubbles, he popped through and shot after Tsunami. Her tail stripe went dark as they swam quietly into the guardian's cave. The three older dragons hardly paid any attention to the river, except for Webbs, who sometimes slept in the shallows. It would never occur to them that two pairs of dragonette ears might be poking out of the water, listening. Clay drifted to a stop near the entrance while Tsunami swam to the far side of the room. That way, at least one of them could hear, no matter where the Minders were talking. Tonight, however, Clay was pretty sure everyone could hear everything, including Glory and Starfly in the passageway outside. From the way Kestrel was shouting, it was possible even the sky wings up in the mountain peaks could hear her. Come here? With no warning? After six years? Suddenly he's interested? A jet of fire shot out of her snout and blasted the nearest rock column. Maybe he wants to make sure we're there ready to stop the war, Webb suggested. Dune snorted. These dragonettes? Then he's going to be very disappointed. He eased himself into a flat boulder, stretching his foreleg stump and mangled wing toward the fire. The big sand wing dragon never discussed his scars or how he lost his foot, but the dragonettes could guess from the anger in his voice whenever he talked about the war. The fact that he couldn't fly was probably why he was chosen for the underground dragonette minding duty. He clearly w wasn't picked for his warm, nurturing personality. We've done our best, Webbs, said. The prophecy chose these dragonettes, not us. Does he even know what happened? Keshul demanded. Does he even know about the broken egg and the rain wing or the defective sand wing? Clay winced. Poor Sonny. He floated closer, keeping his bulky brown length below the surface of the dark water. Through the ripples, he could see the blurred shapes of the large dragons gathered around the fire. Webbs flapped his wings. I'm not sure what he knows or why he cares. The message just said, Moroseer is coming tomorrow. I'm supposed to meet him and bring him here tomorrow. Moroseer. That sounded familiar. Clay racked his brain. A dragon from history class? One of the tribe rulers? No, it couldn't be. All of the tribes were ruled by queens. I'm not worried about Sunny, Dune said. We follow the prophecy's instructions. It's not our fault she's the way she is, but the rain wing, he's not going to like that. A deep growl rumbled in Kestrel's throat. I don't like it either. I never have. Glory's not that bad, Webbs argued. She's smarter than she wants us to know. You overestimate her because you brought her here, Dune said. She's lazy and worthless like the rest of her tribe. And she's not a sky wing, Kestrel snapped. We're supposed to have a sky wing. Clay wished Glory didn't have to hear all this. The guardians never hid how they felt about her, and she never acted like she cared. But he wished he could tell her she was just as important and smart as any sky wing. Well, I never thought Moro Seer would come look at them, Webb said. After he dropped off Starflight's egg, I assumed we'd never see him again. The Nightwings have nothing to do with the war. So he's a Nightwing, which means super powered and mysterious and full of himself. That was all Clay could remember about Nightwings. He found himself actually wishing he could get a lecture from Starflight. The epic wonderfulness of Nightwings was the Black Dragonette's favorite topic. Did the Talons say what he wants? Kestrel asked. 
Well, it's his prophecy, Webb said. I guess he wants to make sure it'll actually come true. Moro seer, Clay felt a jolt run through him, like the stinging shock he sometimes got when June whacked him with his barbed tail for not paying attention. Moro seer was the Nightwing who had spoken the Dragonette prophecy ten years ago. They had learned about him in history, but it was one of the many facts Clay could never remember. Who had delivered the prophecy never seemed as important as who, as who was in the prophecy. But maybe Morosir was more important than Clay had realized. After all, he was coming to see them. Perhaps he would take them out of the, wor out of the world. Perhaps they didn't need to escape after all. Perhaps everything was about to change. Clay had never really believed the legends about Nightwings. Secretive dragons who could read minds, a hidden kingdom that no one could find, a mystery queen, the power to see the future, the way they appeared from darkness to deliver prophecies that shaped the world. It all sounded like fairy tales, about as likely as the world ruled by scavengers instead of dragons. Besides, Clay knew Starflight, and Starflight was many things, annoying, long-winded, smart, too serious, but he had no magical powers, and he was never, ever scary. But the next evening, when the dragon black when a dragon black as a bottomless pit loomed out of the shadows of the entrance tunnel, Clay felt all the rumors about night wings come crashing into his head like a collapsing rock wall. Morosia was even bigger than Kestrel and five times more terrifying. He spread his jagged bat-like wings and peered down at the dragonettes lined up in front of him. He had silver scales like stars in the underside of his wings, like Starflight did. But on him, they seemed to glitter from a great distance and cast a, gold, a cold glow. He looked like he could easily rip off each of their heads in one bite. He also looked like he already hated the five dragonettes, which wasn't what Clay had expected at all. Were they such a disappointment already? Maybe Morosir was reading their minds and knew how confused they all were about the prophecy. Or maybe he was seeing the future and his visions were all a failure, failure, failure. Clay could feel Sonny trembling at his side. He felt the same way, petrified in place, as if his scales were being slowly peeled off, one by one, while the giant Nightwing inspected them. On his other side, Starflight was more still than Clay had ever seen him. Starflight always froze when he was frightened. It was as if he hoped that by not moving, he'd disappear from view and the danger would pass right by. Clay couldn't see Glory, but he knew when Morisir saw her. The huge black dragon stared down at the ring-winged dragonette for a small eternity. His snout twitched with ripples of disgust. A forked black tongue slipped over his teeth. Clay wished his own wings were as vast as the cavern itself so he could hide his friends from Morosir. He wished his talons were as huge as the staglomites and as sharp as the rock shards. He wished he were big enough to be brave and brave enough to be big. He'd never wanted anything so much as he wanted to protect his friends from his, this tall, hissing, scornful, immensely dangerous dragon. He really, really hoped that Morosir wasn't reading his mind right then. Think about cows, think about cows, think about delicious fat cows. Morosir pivoted his head slowly to glare down at Kestrel. He lifted one large craw claw and pointed at Glory. What is that? He said, his voice loaded with enough venom to kill 20 dragons in mid-flight. Starflight looked, took a step back and Clay saw Glory. She was sitting on her haunches with her long tail curled over her talons. Trails of violet and gold chased each other through her scales. Only the shades of flame around her feathery ears hinted she was upset. She stared calmly back at the Moros ear. There was an accident, Kestrel said. We lost the Skywing egg, so we had to get another one somewhere. From the rain wings, Moros ear interrupted scathingly. It was his idea, Kestrel snarled, whipping her tail towards Webbs. He brought her egg here. At least there, we had five dragonettes, said Webbs. That's what matters. Morosir peered down his long black snout at Glory. His egg shifted to Sunny, who let out a tiny squeak and sank a little lower toward the ground. 
More like four and a half, he grunted. Are you supposed to be the sand wing? Don't you eat? What's wrong with you? There was a long, horrible pause while Sunny tried to squeak an answer. She does, Tsunami blurted. She eats fine, as much as anyone. It's not her fault she's small, Starflight chimed in to Clay's surprise. She's a good fighter, Clay said, and so is Glory. Stop talking now, Morosier said, and silence dropped over them. His sharp, menacing glaze landed on Clay. Think about cows, think about cows, think about cows. The tail Nightwing turned to the three guardians. The tall Nightwing turned to the three guardians. Something has gone very wrong here. Yes, Tsunami burst in again. It has, and I can tell you what. We're treated like prisoners. We've never been outside these caves, not once. All we know about this world we're supposed to save is what we've learned in scrolls. We're supposed to be the most important dragonets in the world, but those three treat us like blind salamanders. Cave Clay couldn't believe it. Wasn't she scared of Morosir too? Tsunami, hold your tongue, Dune snapped. I will not, she cried. Please get us out of here, she said to Morosir. Take us away with you. Please don't, Clay thought. I mean, think about cows, think about cows. Now that he'd seen the Nightwing, he'd rather stay trapped here. Ungrateful lizard, Kestrel growled. Without warning, Morosir lunged at Tsunami. His teeth flashed like bright white lightning darting towards her neck. It really is like the night sky falling on you, Clay thought. And then, discovering he was moving too, he flung himself at the Nightwing's huge, rigid back before he could stop to think about what he was doing. His claws sank into the small gap between the shifting black scales, scrabbling for a hold. His tail thrashed as he tried to balance. Below him, he saw Tsunami rolling away and spinning to fight back. Her blue talons slashed at Morosir's nose and underbelly. Clay tried frantically to remember his battle training. He flattened himself along the big dragon's back, snaked his neck forward, and bit down as hard as he could. Ow! His, ja he, his jaw exploded with pain, and he reared back in the black-on-black -black scales. It was impossible to find a weak spot. Morosir jumped away from Tsunami and shook his whole body violently. Clay lost his grip and went flying through the air. He landed with a jarred thud, sliding halfway to the river. As he staggered his feet, he saw Tsunami and Morosir facing each other in the battle positions. Morosir made a grinding noise deep in his throat. He stepped back and swung his tail around into view. Clinging to Morosir's tail, his teeth firmly planted in the vulnerable, vulnerable spot near the end was Sunny. Clay wished he'd remembered about that spot, which every dragon had, no matter which tribe he was from.